Welcome to a new edition of Rational Politics, coming to you from the Captain's Lounge Studios. I'm joined today by Sean McCoy, who is running for councillor at large right here in Longmont. Sean, welcome to the table. Thank you, Nigel. So let's start off, talk a little bit about your background. Okay. Okay? Well, I've lived in Longmont all my life. Uh, I went to school at Central Elementary and at Longs Peak uh, Middle School, and uh, and yes, when it was a middle school, not, I mean, a junior high, not a middle school, uh, I went to Longmont High, go Big Blue, and uh, I uh, have a degree in political science and a master's in education. Uh, I uh, uh, married uh, uh, a friend that uh, I've known for uh, 40 years, Maureen O'Brien. Uh, she was the snotty-nosed little sister of uh, my locker partner in high school and, and in middle school. I have two beautiful daughters, uh, Claire and Molly. They went to Silver Creek. Uh, Claire and graduated in 2014. And Molly graduated in 2018. Uh, I served on multiple different boards and commissions from the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Housing and Human Services Commission, the Police Standards Board, and Boulder County Open Space uh, Board uh, before I got on council in 2007 and uh, was elected to city council in 2007 through 2011. I served on different boards and commissions during that time, like the Airport Advisory Board and the Art and Public Place and the Museum Board. And uh, then uh, I ran again and I lost. And um, I'm a high school uh, US government teacher and I often teach my students the idea that if you uh, can't emotionally handle a loss, you probably shouldn't be in politics because it's not a guarantee. And so uh, my experience there was I, I had a loss. Well, I didn't just waste my time uh, waiting and, and licking my wounds. I went on and I got on the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. I uh, served on my school district's DAC committee, this District Accountability Committee. Uh, I took students uh, all around the world to China twice, uh, once in uh, 2013 and once in 2016. I've taken students to Greece, Italy, and Spain and to, uh, uh, to uh, the Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, and so I got a perspective of how the other half of the world lives and, and, uh, and learned a little bit from that. And uh, when I was uh, uh, in 2019, before the pandemic hit, I st took a course uh, uh, called the Working Families uh, Party Training where it helped uh, me have a better grasp as a community leader of what I can do to help minority groups and women uh, in our community. So I feel like uh, I am really on top of that. I've been a small business owner as a landlord, and I am the Future Business Leaders of America uh, teacher, uh, advisor at my school, and also board director to the state of Colorado, which my job here as board director, I represent St. Vrain Schools, Boulder Valley Schools, Westminster Schools, and clear down to Chatfield. You kind of ruined my second question because Sorry. I was going to ask you what your qualifications are, oh. but I've got a funny feeling you pretty well covered that. I just have a few, so yeah, I, just I, I, hope, to, yeah. I hope I check all the boxes for most people. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably did. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the qualifications aspect? Anything that you think you'd like to talk about? Well, you know, I... I come from a family of people that have been involved. My father, Tom McCoy, uh, in, 2000, uh, in uh, 1983, in the spring, got elected to uh, Longmont uh, City Council, and he's the longest serving city council member in Longmont's history, and he stayed on until 2005. Prior to that, he was on the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. And so I always felt like uh, we always had that sort of back and forth in conversations, like some fathers might talk about football and baseball and basketball. He and I talked about, you know, what was going to be good for Longmont. And so I was raised on this and uh, know, you know, what, what Longmont seemed to always care about and, mm -hmm. uh, and feel strongly about. So I feel like I've got a great grasp of, of that. A great grasp of the town, yes. the politics of the town. Yes. What, what do you feel about the way the town is expanding so rapidly? Uh, is that 100,000? It's about 100,000, 100, and I think me. we've got probably a, uh, we might be pushing 120, 
and I think we have a service area, which means people coming from Niwot, uh, from Hygiene, from Lions, and other places that come here to do their shopping and entertainment, and even some of their employment opportunities and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, we've grown at a pretty remarkable pace, and uh, I would not say that uh, it is healthy to all of a sudden put an abrupt halt on any of that, and that, that's certainly not my policies or ideas, but I do feel that we have to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what type of development we want here. You know, we have to be conscious that, uh, you know, with the Colorado River Compact, we're not going to renegotiate that. That would be if farmers say they're now losing 25% of their water supply here because of what had to happen just in the last few weeks about uh, renego uh, mm -hmm. reworking that and making sure more water flowed down through to the Colorado to California. They would lose probably 50% of that if right. they reworked that because people in the east have no connection to how important water is to Colorado. So. I was speaking with a NASA scientist the other day, and uh, uh, he was explaining that his ideas about if we're at 100,000 today, you know, where do we need to go? Uh, what is the right amount? The one thing I want to express to everybody out there that might be listening is, is that the clientele of a city council member here in, in uh, Longmont is not those that might come and live here. It really is those that live here right now. And sometimes it, get lo it gets lost on, on that. But if we figure out, you know, we only have a certain amount of water, we only uh, have the ability to build a certain uh, uh, amount more, and where we want to go with that, then I think as a community we can all agree how quickly we want to get there. That makes an awful lot of sense. Cause one of the things that has always worried me, I remember the drought that we had, what, uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I can't remember now exactly when it took place. And then we were only running at about 80,000 people. Mm -hmm. And there were certain things that went on during that drought that worried me a lot, like uh, the watering of the curbs. But, of course, we're now trying to get all of that grass taken up and made more natural, which is a good thing. But we kept on growing and growing and growing. And I see the town growing rapidly, but I don't see the infrastructure keeping up yeah. with the rapid growth of the town. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think people are divided on the idea of like uh, growth in regards to like maybe another uh, a athletic uh, center uh, for activities like the uh, uh, center down on Quail Road near the museum mm -hmm. and the pool. Uh, where, where that would go, uh, how soon we should build something like that, because people do have a desire to have those to sort of amenities. Yes. Or they're going to go somewhere else. And uh, the other thing is, is just how that impacts our schools. Boulder Valley, where I teach, uh, is starting to uh, lose students to places like St. Vrain. St. Vrain appears to be on a growth pattern where Boulder Valley appears to be shrinking in, in population size, student population size. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> of course the pandemic didn't help no. with that. And of course where I teach at Monarch High School, the Marshall Fire wiped out a thousand houses in that area. Many of my students and some of my colleagues yep. and, uh, and, and folks there. So that, that had an impact on where I teach. Let's assume that you get elected, mm -hmm. okay? What are your priorities? I, uh, at first thought that my first priority would be, of course, to talk a little bit about things that are bothering people, like, uh, you know, how do we provide housing for our workforce? How do we provide housing for our children that would like to, to come and live here and uh, can't afford to get in uh, to the housing market and have that American dream? And uh, the second thing was to talk a little bit about or think about, uh, you know, certainly what we can do to help the least of our brothers, those that are uh, homeless in our community, and what we can do to help them. But after um, Tony Umley, a, a neighbor of ours uh, growing up, he, we lived on uh, between 2nd and 3rd on Gay, and he was between 2nd and 3rd on Pratt, right over near Old Mill Park. And, um, you know, he was a 
cherished artist here. Uh, when I got on council the first time, he uh, was um, uh, the photographer that took my picture. Mm -hmm. And I, I see his son, Mark, at uh, Target uh, all the time and say hello to him. But after his death, I feel that one of the best things that we can do is uh, work on our pedestrian and uh, uh, street safety. And I think the first thing I would do is uh, to uh, put in a, uh, a Pedestrian and Safe Streets Act or ordinance that uh, address some of the issues that people are really struggling with. I know that uh, uh, some folks, I talked to Sally and Dave on uh, Mountain View uh, near Harvard, are frustrated on how fast people drive. Uh, and at one point we had temporary roundabouts there Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that would slow because they're told that they won't put in dips and they won't put in bumps. So maybe we need to put something in, uh, the city won't. So maybe we need to look at roundabouts and maybe the uh, speed exhibitions and, and drag racing that occurs uh, in the summer months uh, in the evenings at Airport Road. We need to do something else like that. There are people that are complaining of the very fact that uh, you'd have to walk like in Tony Unley's case. You know, he wasn't going to walk four blocks down, find the crosswalk, cross, and then come down. So we need to probably talk about more neck downs, mm -hmm. which uh, have a tendency of slowing people down, and uh, also more crosswalks on third and in places where it would be logical. We need to put in lights like we have at uh, Gay and Ninth that uh, are pedestrian lights. You probably have seen uh, these flashing lights that uh, are uh, at different locations in different cities like Boulder right there at Whole Foods and Pearl. Uh, the, the pedestrian can push the button and they flash. Well, we have signs on Main Street between 1st and 9th that tell people to slow down and that people will, that they're supposed to uh, stop and let mm -hmm. people cross. But it, just the other day my wife was crossing to, uh, uh, to go to Main Street Optical and almost got ran over. She got into the middle of the street and then somebody just wouldn't stop. And so those types of things are simple things uh, that uh, we can do. And I understand people are gonna say, how are you gonna pay for that? And when I was on council before, we had a discussion about red light cameras. And Boulder uh, had, has them and Fort Collins has them and all the other larger cities like that uh, surrounding us have them. And although people complain and say, I hate them, I hate them, what it does is slow yeah. people down. They stop trying to run those lights. We have places like Nelson and Hover that are some of our most dangerous intersections and ha our most uh, incident. I, I don't like to use the word accident because when people use the word accident, it, yeah. it implies that uh, it was <clears throat> unintentional. When you run a red light, it's intentional. Yes. You are feeling that you are in a rush to get from point A to point B because of something you chose or something else that happened. So or they just weren't paying attention. Exactly, exactly. So I think you know we need to do some of that and fix those things. I think we need to do a little bit of education mm -hmm. to people so that they have, uh, for the people along with, maybe run on our cable, run on our, our websites about when you are a pedestrian, where you should cross, when you are uh, on a bicycle. If you're riding on the sidewalk, you need to get off and walk your bike across. When you ride across, you're actually a vehicle in the intersection. Right. And so people I, don't know that. You know, one of the things that frustrates me a lot living here in Longmont are the cyclists. Mm -hmm. They seem to pick whichever side of the road they want to ride on. Some want to ride on the sidewalk. Some want to ride in the middle of the road. Some want to ride on the wrong side of the road pointing straight at you. And you've got no clue what they're going to do next. Yeah, I think that comes down to is when I was in China, I, I, I talked to our tour guide uh, both times about this particular thing. In China, the drivers are first generation drivers. Mm -hmm. And so they had always rode their bikes and they kind of go like a, a flock of birds. Yes. And so now you see how they drive there is kind of like a flock of birds. In the United States, people are so used to driving and everybody ha generally has that access to driving. So they draw, uh, ride their bikes as if they were driving a car. And sometimes that those two 
ideas just don't just, mix. They just don't mix. I, I think that's part of the education part there to, to, to just kind of uh, make people aware. But also drivers, you know, using proper etiquette and, and reminding them. Because we have people like myself that I haven't taken a driving test since I was uh, uh, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And so some of those things I have probably have myself even have bad habits and if we just remind people of what are the the plight and the good habits to have you know it's the idea that you turn your turn signal on even though no one's behind you or even in the intersection and, right. and that sort of mindset I think we need to and work do it, on people. Do it a hundred foot before yeah. you're turning. I, I don't need to know that you have successfully navigated that <laughs> corner. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't need to know that. Yeah. Do you have any final points that you'd like to, to raise at this, at this time? I just want to stress my life <coughs> experience here, my dedication to Longmont. I'm dedicated to Longmont 100%. My children are growing. Uh, they are moving into their own uh, uh, adulthood. And, uh, and my wife and I want to be uh, more contributors to Longmont. She currently serves as the chair of the uh, Callahan House. And, uh, and I just absolutely adore uh, this community. Uh, you talk to some of my friends. I, I have a friend, Jake Sager. His family owns the Imperial Hotel on, on 3rd and Main. And uh, he currently lives in Denver uh, because he, he manages his other properties there. And he always says, oh, no, here it comes. McCoy's going to talk about how wonderful Longmont is. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, uh, if any fault that I have is that I just absolutely think this community is wonderful. I love living in yeah. Longmont. Yeah. I really do. It's yeah. a great little community, great town. There's so much to do here. A couple of theaters, good shopping. Yeah. It's great little community, great yeah. people. Absolutely. Great people here. Well, if and I we have the speakeasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could just kind of show people so that they see, uh, uh, if they see the silhouette uh, sign on the road uh, in a yard sign form, uh, they'll know that's me. And uh, <coughs> my website is uh, www mccoyforlongmont.com and I uh, appreciate your support financially and uh, please vote for me, Sean McCoy. Sean, thank you so much for coming into the studio today. Thank it's you. been an absolute yeah. pleasure meeting you. All right. We have to get you back on this table because I want to talk about education with sure. you. I want to talk about the Constitution with uh, you. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we have a couple of shows. <clears throat> Bit of a throg, sorry. That was fascinating. Um, I've said this before, please, please, please go out there and vote in November. Doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, doesn't matter if you're a Republican, doesn't matter if you're an independent. Vote. Voting is what counts. Voting is what keeps this country running along successfully and correctly. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to Sean. I've got a funny feeling we're going to see him down in the studios quite often. Everyone stay safe out there. I'm Nigel Aves, your host, signing off for Captain's Lounge Studios. Thank you. <laughs>